Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the new PSG Plotter GUI that will help you create plots uh, outside of the Chia GUI application. And I have talked about the benefits of doing this in previous videos, the main one being that if your Chia wallet or harvester are having issues, you don't have to stop your plots uh, while you restart those services. Now some of the benefits of this plot manager is that it's very easy to set up, meaning that you can install it directly from PowerShell and launch it from PowerShell with a single command. Now with that being said, it is written with PowerShell along with a little bit of C Sharp and YAML to create the GUI. And obviously that PowerShell is not a programming language, so it's not going to be the most efficient but given that we're just pretty much starting other processes, it doesn't really need to require a lot of resources uh, for the GUI itself. So it should be sufficient. Now I think the second biggest advantage of this particular plot manager is the fact that there is no configuration file, meaning that you can set up everything in the GUI. So I try to make this as user friendly as possible so that anybody can run it. So you basically have total number of plots, how many parallel plots you wanna run, the time that you want to stagger them by, and then pretty much all the common parameters, the RAM that you want to allocate, the number of threads. So the temp drives will give you information. So I have a one terabyte uh, NVMe right here, and it will say that the max parallel is three. Now you can add that right here, and then you give it the path that you want. Now same thing right here for the final drives, it kind of gives you how many plots are left on these that you can put. So on my H drive, I can put one on here and I can add another one if I want. So my E drive can also take another uh, final plot file, so I'll add that too. Now another advantage of this is, let's say I enter in a wrong path, you know, it will catch this right here, so it says it's a final directory, this path does not exist. So it does have some catches so that you don't uh, accidentally enter in the wrong information. Now let's talk about some of the drawbacks of this particular plot manager. The first being is that currently it will only run on Windows. I have no plans on porting it to Linux right now because I just don't have the time to do that. Feel free to look at the source code and see if you can modify it, but uh, it might be a bit difficult. The second drawback is that it was written in PowerShell 5.1. So if you're using PowerShell Core, it might or might not work. You know, so if you are running on Windows, you should have the uh, Windows PowerShell installed. Now you can check this by doing PS version table, and as long as this says 5.1, you should be good to go. Now the last disadvantage of this plot manager is the fact that it was written by me, and I am not a software developer. I'm a system administrator who likes to program in his free time at home. And I have written some applications in the past, you know, solely in C Sharp, uh, some hybrid PowerShell C Sharp uh, monsters, but you know, this thing is not written by a, you know, an actual professional. So just keep that in mind. So if you are a software developer and you do see the source code and wonder why I did something and think it should be different, well feel free to go to the GitHub. It is open source, so you can do any modifications that you want to it and submit a pull request in which if I think it adds value to the module, then I will merge it. Now if you do have issues with the module, you can of course submit issues uh, right here and I will try to look at them. I can't guarantee that I will fix everything because I do have a full-time job and I wrote this in my free time because I like to code and I like to give back to the community of Chia. Now with all that being said, let me go ahead and show you how to install the PSG Plotter module and then from there I'll show you how to use the Plot Manager GUI. So go ahead and search Windows for PowerShell and then we're going to run this as administrator. Now we're just running it as administrator to install the module. The module itself does not to need to be ran as administrator once we have it installed. So we're going to do install module dash repository. Now the repository is going to be the Microsoft hosted one, PS Gallery. And then the name of the module, which is going to be PS Chia Plotter. Now by default, the PS Gallery is not trusted um, on your computer. So if you don't, if you haven't changed the trusted policy, you might get a prompt and just go ahead and click yes. The reason why it's not trusted by default is because everything on there cannot be guaranteed to be safe but this is the community uh, gallery that is hosted by Microsoft. So here you can see that I already have this module installed. So if you already do have this installed, you will need to update it to version 1.024. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do update module. Now we don't need to specify the repository for this. We just need to do dash name 
and then do PSGIA plotter. And now it will install or update the module that has the PS uh, plotter GUI in it. Now that we have this installed, we can close the administrator uh, prompt and we can open up a non-admin prompt. Now, if you do have any more issues trying to install the module, like the NuGet um, version is not up to date, uh, I do have a video where I kind of go over this. So this is the video where it says PSG Applauder cannot be loaded. And I go over some other useful information in that video as well. So let's go ahead and close out of the admin and then we have a non-admin. Okay, before we go ahead and launch the PSG Applauder GUI, let's go ahead and check the execution policy. So you're gonna do get execution policy and by default it is set to restrict it. So this will prevent you from using any commands in the module. So if we do show PSG Applauder, you can see that we'll get an error saying that the module cannot be loaded. And this is because of the execution policy. So in order to get around this, you will have to open up an administrator console and then do set execution policy to remote sign. And this will allow you to run uh, scripts or modules that you installed from the internet. Now, the execution policy only prevents you from running scripts on the, from the internet accidentally, meaning that it does not prevent scripts from the internet being ran by you or from anyone else that has access to your computer or any software that is running on your computer. And I go over this more detail in this video. And I just want to make this clear because I don't want anybody to get the sense that they're making their system more vulnerable because execution policy is there to prevent you from running scripts accidentally, not entirely. And I can demonstrate this very easily. So if I do powershell.exe, so I'm going to open up a new PowerShell window. I can open it up with execution policy with bypass, meaning that it, you know, I will just bypass any execution policy that there is. I'm going to do you no know, profile. And now that you can see that, you know, I have a new PowerShell process going. And then if I try to run the same command that we did before, it will run no problem. And any type of malicious software is going to do bypass and run in any PowerShell process in the bypass. So execution policy does not protect your computer. It's just there to protect yourself from accidentally running scripts that you did not mean to run. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my execution policy back to remote sign because I do want to run scripts that I download from the internet because I vet the scripts that I run and I do recommend that you vet all the scripts that you plan to run that you get from the community or at least have other people look at it if you're not familiar with code. Okay, so now that we have this all out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and launch P the PSG Applauder GUI. And you can do this by running show PSG Applauder and clicking enter. Now this will launch the GUI. It might take a couple seconds because it is grabbing this information right here you know, grabbing the drives that you have connected and getting the information about them. Now, the first thing that you want to do is click new job right here. And I will walk you through this process right now. So the first thing that you want to indicate is the total number of plots. So if you want to plot 50 plots in total, then you'll type out 50. For this demonstration, I'm going to do five. The next thing that you really want to indicate is the number of parallel uh, plotting processes that you want to have. So if you want to create three plots at a time, three uh, Chia plotting processes, then you would type out three right here. Now the delay in minutes is how you want to stagger these parallel counts. So by default, I have it set to 60, but in this demonstration, I'm going to set it to zero. Now the first delay is kind of like before or how long you want to wait before this job starts. Now more than likely you're going to set this to zero, but I thought it would be nice to have it. Now the case size cannot be changed, so you just have to settle with 32. I just did this for simplistic reasons. Um, the RAM is the minimum of 3390, but you can obviously specify more if you want it to. So I'm going to leave it at the minimum. The threads is the same. So if you want to do two threads or four threads, I don't see any benefit of going above four threads. And I'm going to leave mine to the minimum of two. Of course, you have disable bit field right here or exclude final plot uh, directory. Now, the next thing that you want to do is indicate where you want the temporary files to be created. So you can choose the drive that you want. So I kind of have the ones that you more than likely want to use. So the NVMEs or the SSDs are going to be you know have this green color so i'm going to use my nvme now the max parallel plot is the max number of parallel plots i can have running on this temporary drive 
So in this case, it's going to be three since it's a one terabyte drive. And then you're going to click add. And then here you're going to specify the, the path. So I actually have my uh, temporary files go into p uh, slash plot. Now, if you want to remove this, obviously you can hit remove. Um, and you know you can add actually more than one. So if you have two uh, temporary drives, you can actually add another one. Now I really only have one. I, I do have this uh, this one right here as well, but it's actually filled up with plots now. So I'm going to actually remove that. Now for the final drives, you can also indicate more than one as well. So for my H drive, I can put one plot on there. So potential plots that I can put is one. So I, I will add that, and I'm going to add the path Mr. Pig um, Farm. And then I can also add another plot on my E drive, so I'm going to add that as well. And then do Farm here. Now you can specify the log directory. It defaults to the default log directory. Now this button does not work. I was going to add a way to navigate to it, but I just uh, did not yet. Now you can indicate the pool and public key. Obviously you don't need to do this if you're on your full node already, but if you are running this like on a harvester or um, on a plotting machine, you might have to indicate that right here. So if I do start job, you can see that the first one starts running. Now you can see that the second one uh, did take about 10 seconds. So there is a default of a delay of 10 seconds, even if you indicate zero minutes for the de delay right here. Now you can see that um, for the status of the third queue, it's actually waiting for the file directory space because there's not enough. As you saw, I had one for my H, which can only hold one, and then one for my E, which also could only hold one. So since those are both going to be filled up with the other two plotting processes that are going, it will not go ahead and start another process, which is kind of nice. So I do have that in place. I do think about removing that if you want, you know, having it to where you can say that you don't want it to prevent it, you know, just so that you can have more control. But I did want to, you know, have these little safety features in here so that you don't uh, over allocate space that you don't have accidentally. Now here you can see that, you know, this is the job. These are the queues. So these are the parallel um, plotting processes. So we have two running and we have one that wants to run but is waiting for space. And then we can actually pause these as well. So, you know, if I click pause, then it will finish the plotting process that it has going right now, and then stop and then wait for me to resume it before it starts another, another uh, process. So I'm going to go ahead and click resume. Now let's go ahead and look at the, the Q plots uh, group box right here. So we can see which job this run belongs to, which Q. So this belongs to Q1 and which run. So it's currently in phase one and it gives you the progress right here. Now it also gives you the estimated time remaining. Now this is estimated and this is very much estimated so it will not be perfect. It gives you the current runtime right here. Now you know these these files do exist. Um, let me go ahead. You can see that you know it does have these files but um, currently they're all zero kilobytes. So uh, this will start to update once the temporary files actually get a size. And then here you can see that we have the temporary directory for this run, the final directory. So you can see that you know I indicated those two final directories and it picked one from each uh, based on the available space. So that's you know just a demonstration that you can indicate more than one drive and it will pick the ones that have enough space. Now you have buttons right here so I can go ahead and open up the log file for this run right here. And then, you know, I can open up some log statistics. So there, you did see a PowerShell window flash, and unfortunately that's just a workaround that I had to do for this to work uh, easily. And here, you know, this will get filled out as uh, the plotting process goes more along. So it gives you the plot ID, you know, the parameters that we've used, and also it will give you how long each phase ran, the total plot time, etc. Now the final drive won't be filled out until it copies to the final drive. So you know all those are just listed as zero right now because it has not gotten to that point. And then here you can just kill the process as well. So here we have all the runs. So uh, if we had multiple jobs going or um, some finished plots or runs, 
you know, these will all be listed right here. Here we have completed runs and failed runs. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the process. So there is, you know, a warning saying, are you sure you want to kill the process? And I'm going to click yes. So the nice thing about this is that it will actually uh, delete the uh, temporary files associated with that um, run. So you don't need to clear out your uh, temporary drives if you want to kill that run. Now occasionally there will be like one file left over, um, you know, if the process didn't end in time. So that's not a huge deal, but occasionally you might see it, you know, unable to delete this single file. So now if we go back to all runs, we can see that we have three here and we go to failed runs, we have uh, it listed right here and our completed runs is still zero. So if I open up log, you can see, you know, how far it got. And if we go back to current runs, um, you can see that it went ahead and started a new plot to this, uh, this final directory right here. Now obviously these plots will take about six hours. You know, it says seven, but it'll probably take a little bit less than that. Um, you know, and this will get filled out as accordingly. So the, it, it calculates the terabytes per day, the plots per day, your best and worst time, and your average time. Now these volume information do not automatically update. So these will stay the same from the second that you launch the GUI, but you can refresh them. So if I hit refresh, it will actually refresh them. And you can see my Z drive actually changed and size um, because I'm recording a video and that's where it gets recorded too. So if you do want to refresh this information you will have to click this button right here. So it took some time but you can see that the temporary size finally did show up so this is 60 gigabytes it is in gigabytes and this is 53. Uh, so what it's doing is it's reading the temporary files with the plot ID in the name. So if these say zero, well, it's going to calculate zero gigabytes. So until these get updated with the actual size, uh, you know, this will remain zero. So for me, it's around 10, 12 minutes. Okay, so now, obviously, these are going to take a long time to finish. So I'm going to show you, you know, what it would look like, you know, if these did finish by using the notepad process instead. Now, I could kill each of these by doing this, and it will automatically delete the temporary files. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of it. But So if I exit out of it like that, it will not delete the temporary files because the functions cannot finish running before the GUI actually exits. So if we go to Task Manager, we can see that you know the Chia executable or the, the Chia process did stop, but um, it wasn't able to delete these temporary files in time. So if you do exit out of the Plot Manager without killing those processes first, it will not delete these temporary files. So you're going to have to delete them um, yourself. So I'm going to click Yes, and then of course you got to go to the Recycling Bin to make sure that it gets actually deleted. Now, if you do want to play around with this uh, Chia Plotting Manager without uh, running the Chia processes for the uh, jobs, you can run it with the switch debug with Notepad. So this will start Notepad processes instead of the Chia Plotting process. Obviously, not all the features are going to be in here that are going to be the same, but you can set this up as you normally would. So I'm going to again do zero. I'm going to do five total plots with three in parallel. I'm going to select my same NVMe and I'm going to set my two that I selected last time, my E and my H. Now I'm going to click start job and then here you can see that it started a notepad process. So this can be helpful if you're just trying to get your head around how this manager works. So I'm going to minimize that. Now obviously the open log won't work on these because the log file is not being generated. You know, this will also not work. But let's go ahead and simulate one of these processes being finished. So if we close out the notepad process, it will exit out normally. So it will think that the process finished up correctly. So if I do that, it's going to actually think that the job was completed. And then we can see that it's under completed jobs up here we can see that the plot is uh, completed and we have zero failed plots. Now it does open up another one um, even though realistically it wouldn't because there would be 100 gigabytes that would have been saved onto that drive but since you know this isn't actually creating a plotting process that's not happening. So let's go ahead and check out the pause feature as well so this is going to be Q1 so 
This is Q1, so I'm going to go ahead and kill this process. Now it does take some time because it is basically running in a loop. And here you can see that a new notepad process did not start and it is currently paused. So if, if I click resume, it should start back up within like 10 seconds. And here we have a new notepad process going. Now this waiting on file directory space, now this is a loop for 60 seconds because, you know, if you are waiting on space, it might take a while. So that's why I have a pretty long loop for the waiting on file directory or waiting on temporary directory space. Now the last thing that I do want to mention is the fact that the total number of plots you want to create are going to be calculated with plots completed and plots failed. So if you have, let's say, two plots that failed and then three plots that completed normally, well that will total five. So it's not going to be the total number of plots completed, it's going to be plots completed plus plots failed. So now you can see that we have one in progress, two completed, and two failed. So this cube finished up along with this cube. So if I kill this process, you can see that we'll have three failed plots, two completed ones, and that will equal up to a total of five. So this job will be completed. And you can see that the status did get updated to completed. And then here you can see since we got two completed, you know, we have two plots per day. Um, and we have 2.2 terabytes per day. And then here you can see the best time, the worst time, the average time. Obviously, this has a lot of work that could be done. Um, I just threw quick information that I think would be useful in the summary group box right here. Now, obviously, this plotting manager is not perfect. And I do expect some people may be running into issues um, because I can't anticipate all the machines that it's going to be running on. And you can see right here that, you know, this doesn't get updated when the plots are completed. You know, the summary is kind of lackluster. But if I try to make this perfect, I probably would have never released it. And so I just figured I would get it in a working state that I think works, you know, sufficiently enough for most people. And um, I do anticipate on working on it in the future. But again, it will take some time. So if you do have some features that you want me to include in it, I can already anticipate people wanting the delay to be the phase one delay instead of minutes. So I will try to work on doing that, but it will take some time. I do hope you find this video useful and you find that this plotting manager is easy to use and I hope it helps you plot in the future or replots um, whenever pools come out. I will be updating as fast as I can any additional plotting parameters that will be used for plotting uh, pool plot files. So I will try to rush that update as well. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys have given me in my previous videos and I'm very happy that some of my tools that I've created has been useful for people in the Chia community. Now with that being said, I would like to give a quick shout out to the channel Sloth Tech TV since he did mention one of my videos in his last video and you know I related to so much of what he said in his video, is your farmer really working? And just his journey in Chia and how it's been such a learning process even from someone coming from IT. So, you know, his videos are very good and very relatable. And overall, he just has a positive outlook and something that is really needed in the Chia community, especially if you visit the Reddit, uh, it can be a bit of a downer. Once again, thank you for watching the video and thank you for the patience of this module coming out over the PSG plotter GUI. I know it took a much longer than I expected, um, but I do hope that you guys enjoy it if you are still plotting or planning to replot for the pools. All right, bye.